this right here is our air intake. And let me show you something about the air intake. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Okay, so if you look at the air intake, you'll notice that there is a plate right there. So it doesn't go all the way into the stove. And then there's holes right here on this side of the plate. And then right on the back side of the plate is where the air enters. So when, when this stove is installed, and let's say you want to use an outside air kit, this stove uses what's called an air dump or an air mix. Um, it's not a true sealed system. So the air come from the outside will connect onto here if you have the stove installed with the vent just coming straight out and no, not enough vertical rise. If the stove were, let's say, a power failure, um, if you have vertical rise, the heat will naturally draw it out of the stove. But if you have a, uh, uh, a direct vent system with the exhaust coming out and the air coming in, a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, if there's any smoke, it's going to go back to the outside because uh, it, it's a sealed system. But this is not a sealed system. All right. Uh, and so if the smoke can't get up and it starts to come backwards on this pipe, it's basically just going to dump into the back of the stove and then it's going to go into the house. I am also a very big fan of access doors that can be opened without having to use tools of any kind. We don't have to remove any screws or anything like that to get to the sides of the stove to access the components for service. Inside here, we have our combustion motor right here with a removable hub, which is great. So we can replace just the motor without having to replace the, uh, uh, the whole assembly. And let's see, we also have, so we can move this a little bit closer. This right here, this, this guy, uh, it's locked into a, a position right now and we can undo this from the backside, but this is our damper. Um, and this will be set up according to the installation. And uh, I'm not gonna fire the stove up, so I can't really tell you exactly where to go, but if you look in the owner's manual, it tells you how to set this damper up. Um, usually, you just push it all the way closed. When you have a high burning fire, your fire is gonna get really orange. And then you kind of pull this out to achieve more air or less restriction. And you'll start to see the, the flame come straight up and go from orange to like white. And that's where your sweet spot is just when it starts to do that. And then you lock this in position so it can't be moved out of position. All right, so this is the right side of the stove. Uh, and this is our combustion motor. And this brings the air in and sends the exhaust out. And this whole assembly is sold as a part, which gives you the motor with the hub and the housing. And down here we have a low limit switch. Uh, this detects that, that right down there, that white switch. That detects the heat uh, at 140 degrees. It connects the circuit on these two wires, which tells the control board that we have proof of fire. If you need to replace the combustion motor, you'll basically just unplug the uh, wires from the, uh, from the jack. And there are some zip ties that we need to get rid of right there. And then we can separate this motor from the assembly. And this is the most common replacement. This is going to be 11 30 seconds or nine millimeter. And there's gonna be six of these nuts right here. So. <clears throat> we'll get into the screws. We got one more nut to get off. This motor is also always grounded with this green wire and the green wire can really go on any of the threaded posts where it can fit. And 
take that off. And then we can remove the motor from the assembly. Just like so. So there we go, there's the combustion motor that's taken out and it spins nice and freely. Um, when you're, if you ever decide that you're going to replace just the impeller blade, um, you gotta make sure that you mount it in the right place right here. You always wanna have a little bit of space underneath the impeller blade, um, but you can't have it too far forward or it's not gonna fit into the depth of this guy right here. So the motor comes out like that and our gasket simply comes off of the post like so. Let me show you some things about this motor. All right, so this motor right here is the OEM motor. This is a really nice motor. It's got stabilization mounts and it's got its cooling fan on the inside and it's got a jacket right here or the housing and this motor uh, though it has a, a port right here for oil it's uh, it doesn't require it um, because this is a sealed bearing and it says right there no oiling um, so this motor doesn't really need any service um, the impeller blade should spin freely just like that um, if it's really tough to move around just replace the motor um, if the housing of this right here is warm, it's probably fine. If this housing is really hot, um, this motor is thermally protected. It will turn off at 140 degrees, uh, rendering the uh, stove to shut itself down. If you order a new one, you're going to get a new gasket and you're going to put this on just like so. Then you're going to take your motor, your new motor, and you're going to mount it so that the wires, the pigtail of the motor is in the up position so that it can get onto the jack. You're simply going to place that on there. And then what I usually do is I'll take the grounding wire, I'll put it on the first one, and then I'll just put one nut on there finger tight just like so mm -hmm. work is calling uh, and that will hold everything in place and then we'll just go around and put our other five nuts on simply plug in the motor and you're done open this door up and here is our control board and this is a classic Whitfield control board uh, that's been uh, used for the montage it has a start button, which turns the power cycle on. It's got a heat output, which is gonna be registered by five increments. So you got uh, low, medium, low, medium, medium, high, and high. And then we have a blower setting, same thing, low, medium, low, and then it's gonna go medium, and then medium, high, and then high, and then when you press it again, it goes back down to the low again. And then we have our feeder right here and we can stop the feed and the unit will run out of pellets and it will turn itself off uh, and that's how you turn the unit off. Um, also, you may have to uh, turn that button on. Do you have to turn that button on? I don't know, I'm gonna have to play with it and see how it goes. Um, with the old Whitfields, you actually had to push this once to initiate the uh, stove to start feeding uh, and then you would press it again to stop it. This one might actually do that on its own. I'm gonna have to uh, plug it in and see what happens. Uh, and then we have micro adjustments right here on the pellet feed. So we can go this way and we can slow the feed down. And then we can go this way and we can increase the feed. And I believe that that is uh, all the way over is one second more and all the way this way is one second less. And then uh, over here we have the combustion air trim. And this is going to adjust the volts of the uh, combustion motor fan, which was on the other side, to spin faster and bring in more air, or spin slower and bring in less air. And you can use these two things independent of one another 
to dial it in according to the pellets that you're using and uh, get a really uh, nice burn out.